Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming out on this beautiful Saturday evening. Thank you for coming out. I hope you enjoy the show. Just a couple of quick announcements before um, we get going with the show. The first thing is, um, the show lasts approximately two hours, depending on how much time you spend drinking in the interval. Um, on the subject of which, the Axial Sans Frontier, as you've seen, have set up um, a drinks and food store just outside in the lobby there. So please go and buy lots of food and drink at the interval. But please, however, drink it and eat it during the interval. You're not allowed to bring food or drink back into here by school rules. I saw you. <laughs> David, arrest that man. <laughs> okay. uh, so please don't bring uh, food in. The second thing is probably a little bit more important uh, for some of you, I don't know. Uh, the set the scene changes here when, between scenes um, are usually, not every time, but 90% of the time, accompanied by flashing lights. So if you are sort of subject to, I don't know, migraines that can be caused by flashing lights or by uh, you have epileptic fits, or you die, or something. Um, please, uh, the best thing, when you, see the, when you see the set changes starting, just sort of bury your head in your knees, or um, cover your eyes, or run out screaming, or something. <laughs> Whatever it is necessary to do that. Um, okay, I think that's everything. So, thank you very much again for coming. I hope you enjoy the evening. And I will hand you over to the waiting room. Uh, where am 
I? Surprised? It isn't quite what I expected either, but uh, I don't suppose I really knew what to expect. <laughs> Excuse me? Do I know you? Me? No, I don't think so. I'm Jackie. Pleased to meet you. Hello. I know this might sound a little strange, but I don't know how I got here. I don't even know where I am. Oh, I see. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know where exactly we are either, but I guess there's going to be something like this. I don't get you. Something like what? Well, it's no good place to get her down. I'm sure someone will come for us soon. You may as well sit down. You didn't mention your name. Oh, sorry. It's, it's Becky. Becky Riley. You think I'd put out magazines or something, wouldn't you? You, you know, like at the doctors. I don't know. You said you were going to tell me what you meant by something like this. Oh, yes. Well, I don't really know, to be honest. I mean, what did you expect? Me? I didn't expect anything. Where are we? Don't ask me. I only arrived a short time before you. I suppose this is where we start our journey. That is, I assume it will be a journey. This just gets weirder by the minutes. I don't know where we are, and I don't know where we're going. Wait a minute. I figured it out. Ah, uh, you worked out where we are. This is one of those TV shows, right? I've fallen asleep, maybe even been drugged with something, and you're just here to freak me out, right? So that everyone can have a good laugh. Well, ha, ha, ha. Uh, no. You're wrong. I really don't know where we are. It's just that I'd known for some time it was going to happen. So I guess I kind of prepared myself for this. Oh, this is heavy. Where were you before you came in through that door? I just found myself outside that door, opened it, and here I am. OK. Uh, where were you before that? I was with Ange and Valerie. They're two friends of mine. And we were on a cliff top. A cliff top, eh? Slipped and seemed to be flying like it was a dream. I think I get the picture. What did you mean by a journey? What did you assume would be lined with castles and unicorns in the clouds? You're freaky. Here's someone who might be able to help us. Do you know this man? Greetings, my dears. I am so very sorry you've both been kept waiting. No problem, we were just acclimatizing. Yes, it doesn't create a very good first impression, does it? I suggested some nice decor, or even maybe some plants. But they wouldn't listen. Do you know where we are? <laughs> I do, but please let me take my time in answering you. There is a lot to explain, and I understand you're still in a state of shock. Oh, it's a perfectly simple question, isn't it? Ah, the question is simple to ask, but the answer depends in part on you. You what? I think you might have a bit of an inkling, don't you? Yes. As soon as the pain had left me, and I found myself breathing normally, I realized that something had happened. Now, let me first of all assure you that there is absolutely nothing to be worried about. We've been kidnapped! What do you want, money? I don't think you realize who this is, Becky. And who do you think I am, Jackie? Big man upstairs? No, I'm just an operative here. And by the way, we have all the money we could possibly need. You're terrorists! No, you certainly have not been kidnapped. Who are you, and where am I? There is nothing to be alarmed about, but I am afraid I must request your indulgence for the moment. Am I what? That is to say, I will answer all your questions very soon. <coughs> now, would you both like to join me? Oh, to go where? Join you in what? Why, join me in a cup of tea, of course. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you take one sugar, and you take two. How did you know that? It's in your files. Ah, uh, but well, that's wrong. I don't take sugar. Since you developed the illness. 
Yeah, that's right. I'm not allowed it. But do you still feel ill? Well, no, but I feel like I'm cured. So I suppose I would like sugar, please. Oh, and have you any biscuits? Chocolate would be great. Of course. I always find tea helps establish an atmosphere conducive to discourse, don't you? Okay, so how did I get here? Well, I suppose it could be said that you flew. Flew? No. I haven't been on a plane for two years. Oh, my dear, there are other ways of flying. What is the last thing you remember? I was with my friends and we were on a cliff top. What happened? I, I was walking near the edge of them down, and I slipped. Oh, so that's what happened. I was knocked out, and so a helicopter brought me here. So this is some part of a hospital, right? I suppose it has certain similarities. I understand you're still in a bit of a shock. You seem particularly well prepared. It's obvious you've had a very loving family. Do you feel ready to move on? Yes, I think that I do. There's no turning back once you do. You'll be ready sooner or later, but if you're ready now, I'll be very pleased. Is there an alternative? Technically, yes, but I think in your case it would be unnecessary. Have you properly said goodbye to your friends and family? Yes, I'm ready to move on, if that's what you'd call it. Excellent. No point delaying time unnecessarily then, is there? Hello. Yes, we're ready for Jackie now. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, are you Jackie? Yes, I am. My name is Susie. I will be your guide for the first stage. There's nothing to be nervous about. Now, if you're quite sure you're ready, I'd love you to accompany me through the door. And I have Jackie to get the biscuits, Susie. It's not hard. Well, what about me? No, not the biscuits. Where are you taking her? I can see that you're still in a state of shock, but Cornelius here will explain everything. I'll probably see you a bit later, but bye for now. It's my own blend, you know. Very refreshing. Do you feel a bit more relaxed now? Uh, Good, then please listen to me carefully. There's a few things I'd like to explain to you. Okay, why am I here? Why are you here? That's a far better question than where am I? Because, you see, in a way, you aren't really anywhere. I, I don't understand. What does that mean? Well, you are, in a manner of speaking, in between worlds. You're no longer on Earth, and we need to decide where to send you next. Are you trying to tell me that I'm dead? Well, yes. <laughs> and no. You are in a very earthly sense dead. But I don't feel dead. I remember that I slipped and I fell and then... Blackness? But that's the point. You shouldn't be feeling any different from Earth. Because what on Earth is seen as the end is actually just the start of a long, ongoing journey. But if I have died, who are you? Expecting Dumbledore? <laughs> we try to ensure that receivers such as myself appear similar in age and appearance to newcomers such as you to better put you at your ease. In your case, you've just died at a very young age and you haven't got the chance to experience much of life or to prepare yourself for the transition from it. So that's why the other girl seems so prepared. Why, yes. Jackie discovered 12 months ago that she had cancer. Surrounded by her friends and family, she was able to prepare herself better than most. Prepare herself? Wait, what about my mom and my dad and my friends? Yes, I know. I can't fix it for you to meet them as such, but I can arrange it for you to see them in human form. What do you mean? Well, you will be able to recognize them, obviously, but they won't be able to recognize you, and you won't be able to tell them who you are. Why here? Why 
Why not? It's a neutral place. Didn't you used to come here regularly with your friends? Yeah, most weekends. Well then, let's have a cup of tea. S'il vous plaît, a pot of tea for two, please. Deux tasses de thé, s'il vous plaît. Thé? Les Anglais. <laughs> what a strange place. Don't they speak English? Oh, would you carry any money on you? I don't tend to use it much. Yeah, I think so. Wait, how come the waiter can see you? I thought you said you'll always be, vi be visible only to me. You're quite right, but in this instance I couldn't resist sampling some of the local tea. <laughs> so, no one else can see you? You're quite right. I believe your friends will be arriving here soon. You did leave them rather suddenly. And I thought you would like to know how they're getting on. Val, and You must remember, they won't see you. Pleasure. 
<laughs> Two more chairs that um, um quatre euros, please. I'll take this. I really have died. I looked Valerie right in the eye and there wasn't even a flicker of recognition. I hope you didn't find the experience too traumatic. I find it helps sometimes for new arrivals to see people they know. So what now? Well, I'd like to have a word with a waiter about the abominable tea. But unfortunately, my terms of work do not allow me to speak to people unconnected to my clients. I wasn't referring to the tea. Anyways, what did you expect here? Oh. Shall we go back to the waiting room? I think you've seen enough here. I can come back, can't I? Really? Would you like to go to other places? Oh, that's what I meant. I didn't mean this cafe. Quite right, too. I'd have a few words to say to the staff if I was to come back here. Oh, wait, I better pay for the tea. Don't be ridiculous, we're not paying for that. <laughs> seconds notice you're going to die. You just had a lot to take on board, and it would be most unreasonable to ask you to progress so easily to the next stage. So, do I just have to wait here? Not quite. What is this? Where am I? I don't know you two. I don't think we've been introduced to either. But if I'm not mistaken, your name is Helen. What? How do you know my name? Who are you? You may call me Cornelius, and this is Becky. Nice to meet you. Do feel free to join us. We don't bite. Where am I? This isn't part of the house, is it? Oh, you mean the, the house you were just partying at? No, it isn't, I'm afraid. Look, if this is some kind of joke, I don't find it very funny. I assure you, my dear, no one is trying to joke around. You're the one who intrudes upon our conversation. And it presumes to be asking all the questions. Allow me to ask you a question. What were you doing before you entered? Where were you? That's two questions. <laughs> well, you just asked me four questions, two of which you indirectly repeated. I'll content myself with the last question. Where were you? Well, I was at Nicola Barclay's 18th birthday party. Yes, I know. Go on. Well, I was in a room with this guy, I know? Yes. Uh, is this fair, Cornelius? Do you go on. He's stabbing me. <coughs> I remember the pain as he stuck the blade in, and the blood. There was so much blood. I'm so sorry, Helen, but I had to ask. But there was blood all over my clothes, and I felt searing pains going right through me. But you feel all right now, don't you? All right. I told you what happened. Now you answer me! Where am I? What's happened to me? Why don't you come and sit down with us? <laughs> <laughs> just wait for it. He's about to offer you a cup of tea. Actually, I was just about to say that Helen has just had a very traumatic experience. Oh, sorry. But then I was going to offer some tea. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I could use a tea, thank you. Now I find it works best for when our new arrivals work out for themselves where they are. You spoke of being repeatedly stabbed, but are you conscious of any wounds? No, I can't feel anything. What about internal pains? No, I feel fine. All right then. If I remember correctly, you spoke of being covered in blood. But there isn't much blood right now, is there? But I don't understand. I was stabbed. I felt searing pains going right through me and everything going black. And 
happened then? Well, I just found myself out there and... No, it can't be! I just had the same experience, Han. Are you trying to tell me that I'm dead? But it can't be! You're, this is going to be some kind of joke! I don't feel dead! You're trying to trick me! I assure you, Helen. No one's trying to trick you. But I can't be dead! Not now! There was so much I was going to do! I was going to travel and see the world! I'm well aware of that. You! How could you know that? You don't know me! I love you! What about my ambitions? Everything was set up! You can't do this to me! This wasn't my time! I understand you No, saying... you don't! You don't understand anything! Well, I'm not coming, see? I'm not ready! This wasn't my time! Helen, please! No! Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you go back through that door? There isn't much to see. It's difficult to explain in so many words, but at best you become what you might call a ghost. What? Forever? No, not necessarily. You can break away from the Earth dimension, and sooner or later you'll arrive in front of the Earth. Why are you telling me this, but not Helen? This is what I meant by you passed the first test. You fully and readily accepted that you were dead. It's the first task for anyone who has ended their mortal existence. So what now? Well, in cases such as yours, we can allow you to have a few additional experiences in human form so as to better prepare you for your journey. These can be unfulfilled ambitions, emotions as yet unrealized, or pretty much whatever else you want. But there are conditions. First of all, you cannot form any tight relationships, so that rules out getting married and starting a family. Second of all, you only have a maximum of five experiences, although each of these can be for as long as you like. And third of all, you cannot directly change human events. But how can I avoid changing human events if I'm interacting with people? Why, is it something you'd like to change? Oh, no, but I mean, even in just little ways. We all affect each other by what we say and do. Well, of course, everything that we say and do can have a greater impact than we realize. However, anything that you might say that could have an effect on the minds that you talk to will be directly erased from their minds forever. This is a necessary precaution. You must understand. I guess that makes sense. Is that it then? Yes. Oh, I almost forgot. You can summon me at any time using telepathy. This can be via the chat or to let me know for when you want to move on. Let's go. Do this much? I suppose so. So? 
What do you uh, want to do tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, my parents are having friends over. But what do you suggest? You could always uh, come around to my place. <laughs> my mum and dad will be out. Oh, I thought you were going to suggest something exciting. <laughs> well, it's always the pictures. Big wedding's on. What's that? It's that rom-com I was telling you about. With the man of secret. Oh, so that's why you want to see it? Yeah. What? I mean, <laughs> we could watch the Zac F. Ron movie. <coughs> hmm, that could be worth seeing. Yeah, so, think you can make it all the way back from here then? Why not? I'm ready. So you can keep up. Wait a minute. <laughs> hasn't been wasted on you. Let's go back to the waiting room. Oi! Wakey, wakey! Where do you think you are then? The Ritz? What? You can't stay here. This is a public park. Move it. But wait, that other woman said I could stay here. What other woman? Theresa May, the Queen. No, it was the policewoman. Policewoman. And she just said you could stay here and make yourself at home, eh? Oh, uh, yeah? She must be one of you lot. Listen, 
We don't have any women at our station, so stop lying and move it. But she was here. Oh yeah, nothing to do with the drink or the stuff you've been sticking in your arm. I don't use. Well, let's take a look at your back. Right. Either you're gone in five minutes when I get back, or I'm taking you in. You make me sick, you people. When I was your age, I had a job. I was in the army. But you lot, you think society owes you something. Well, you're the reason this country is in the mess it is. Now, I don't want to see you here again. Got it? Move it! I saw her. She was here. what you'd like to do next. I'm never going to experience anything quite as I would if I was still alive, am I? But you still feel alive, don't you? You know what I mean. Few people ever arrive here thinking that they've accomplished everything they ever left unresolved on Earth. Really? You could have been on Earth for another 50 or 60 years and still not arrived here in any better stakes. Think about it this way. You could have arrived here with a string of bad relationships behind you. You could have done serious harm to someone, or had a monumental failure in your life. True. But what's to say, had I lived longer, I might have achieved one good long-lasting relationship, or maybe even one monumental success. I am expecting someone who did have a monumental success, and he's not even that, that older than you. And um, you want to introduce me to him? You can do that for yourself. I thought you might just want to sit and listen. Get ready. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hi, ma'am. Um, uh, where am I? You might want to figure that out for yourself. In the meantime, I was just about to make some tea. Can I get you something? I, I don't do tea, but you can fix me a coffee. <laughs> a coffee? <laughs> I'm sure I can be arranged. <laughs> Not much of a place, is it? Reminds me of the backstage of some crummy theater I played when I started out. Hey, are you Brett Alehouse? Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Whose idea was it to send me back to rehab? You, you, you're not a journalist, are you? I don't think this is rehab. Well, I suppose it is in a way. So, why are you here then, booze? No, I don't drink. Well, at least not very often. Too much cocaine then! <laughs> Absolutely not. I've never touched drugs. Well, there's got to be some reason they sent you here. I suppose I just arrived here unexpectedly, like you. Send it for your own good, eh? I know how you feel. It's happened to me like that before. I'm gonna kill my manager for sending me here this time, though. All I was doing was having a few vodkas at home. He must have let himself in and found me asleep. Well, maybe it's for the best. For the, for the best? The American leg of my world tour starts in five days! Why couldn't it have waited until after that? Ah, you two getting to know each other, I see. Britt here was just telling me that he's going on tour next week. Uh, what, what do you mean, was? <laughs> Baby, I am going on that tour! <laughs> that might not be so easy, I'm afraid. Listen, I don't know what Barry has told you, but I can leave this place whenever I like! Is Barry your manager? Barry is my ex-manager! Sack him after this! Very well, Britt. If you're feeling all right, we're not trying to hold you here against your will. So, so, I, I can leave this place. If you want to. If you're sure I can't help you. Good! 
I don't even like the look of this place. Rehab is meant to be nice and comfortable. This has the look of a prison. Don't bother renting a taxi. I, I don't have my phone. Where's your landline? Uh, we haven't got one. Um, no landline? What, what kind of place is this? Some kind of therapy center? Because I don't need any therapy, okay? Now listen, this is not, and I repeat not, a rehab or a therapy center. You're here because everyone arrives here sooner or later, but you just happen to arrive here a little sooner than you expected. I, I see. I've been accepted into the Pop Music Hall of Fame. <laughs> I admit, I didn't think it would happen until at least another two or three albums. We're backstage, right? You got a Lifetime Achievement Award for me? Barry must have had me brought here in a limo as I was asleep. Now listen, I don't have any award for you, and you certainly did not arrive here in any sort of limo. Is this, is this a drugs bus then? Did the police take me out of my house? No, the reason you're here is entirely down to you. This has nothing to do with your manager, the police, or the music industry. Uh, in that case, why aren't I in the celebrity suite? Because there are no celebrities here. Everyone is equal. That's fantastic. <laughs> but I am a world famous celebrity. I need a place where I can be me, away from my fans. Now that's something you can provide. <laughs> but if you don't mind, I'll first attend to Becky. <laughs> my tour starts in five days. What would you like to do next, Becky? Um, let me think. Oh, can I visit Angela and Valerie whilst I'm thinking about it? Of course. Shall we say, about two years after your date of death? Whoa! Yeah, I can see how they're getting on. W wait, wait a minute. Two years after the date of your death? What is this, some kind of fantasy? No, Brit. This is reality. <laughs> I've had enough of this nonsense. It, it's just blackness. Where are we? You're not ready to try that way yet. Is he here yet? Oh, hi. Please, can I handle him? Be my guest. <laughs> this is Susie. She's going to explain a little more to help you come to terms with where you are. Come along, Becky. We'll go this way to her. Oh, Susie. Behave yourself. <laughs> can I just say, I love your work. Well, uh, thanks, Betty. <laughs> this must have come as a shock to you. Please, sit down. Sure thing. You're so tense. Try to relax. Hey, it's cool. If Barry arranged this, maybe I won't sack him. Trust me, this has nothing to do with Barry. Well... Have you figured out where you are yet? Well, um, I think I have, and I might regret asking this, but... Have I died? Because if I have, then this must be heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Suicide, and wasn't involved in any sort of violent attack or accident. What happened? Simple. Went home, started drinking vodkas, and had one too many. In his drunken state, he decided to go relax in the jacuzzi. He fell asleep and drowned. <laughs> I suppose that's a kind of accident. Where are we now exactly? 
Your friends are away on activity week. Just find a place from which to watch them. They won't hear or see you, but just concentrate on what goes on. I think this is the fourth marker point. Yep, it's red. Right, there should be a stone somewhere with a direction arrow on it. And the letter, I suppose? How did I let you talk me to this marriage and that stuff? I thought it would be just about theatre makeup or something. You never said anything about camping or walking. Oh, Val, you're not still moaning, are you? I'm not moaning. It's just not quite what I imagined. Oh, come on, a few cuts and stings, so what? Val, you're doing fine. You really think so? Yes, I do. And what would you be doing if you hadn't come? Chilling out, I guess. Watching TV, probably. Or hanging out with Pete. Val? Yeah? Have you and Pete? What? Oh, come on. You've been together a year. You're virtually married. Oh, you must have. Ange? Well, haven't you? Look, here comes out the team. <laughs> <laughs> There's a red marker. So, where to now? Oh, hi. Hi. Have uh, you guys found the stone? Uh, yeah, we have. It's, it's pointing in uh, uh, that direction. So why aren't you heading in that direction? Because we're just, you know, having a rest. Oh yeah, we could do the rest too, couldn't we? <laughs> you you <coughs> didn't think we'd fall for that, did you? It's worth a try. Actually, I'll do mine the rest. Go on then. So, uh, where are you two from? Uh, Manor. You? We're from Pearsburg. Have you done this before? First time. What about you? It's our third week away. Have you got to the end of one of those treasure hunts before? Yeah, there's usually a puzzle at the end that takes, like, figuring it out. It gives the other a chance to catch up. <laughs> anyway, let's go find that stone. Alright. See you. Bye. Come on, Val. As soon as they find it, they'll be off and have a head start on us. You heard what one said. There's a chance to catch up at the end. Well, that's not the point. Oh, that way. Oh, there you go. What did I tell you? It's only a bit of flower. Val, oh, come on. Angie, wait. He didn't see me. They didn't even mention me. It's two years since you died. And people move on. I'm sure your friends still think about you from time to time, but did you really expect them to be talking about you a lot? I don't know what I expected. I just wanted to see how they were getting on. Valerie and Pete? He was so ill. That often happened in two years. I know, but we were like a gang, you know? Our own little group. Ah, but to live is to change. Most people tend to be more focused about the future than about the past. In all probability, you wouldn't have remained a trio, believe me. Have you decided where you'd like to go next? Well, I never traveled very much. I want to see a bit of a, another country. Do you have anywhere in particular in mind? New York, perhaps, or Sydney? I'm not really a city type. I was thinking somewhere more wild and beautiful. A jungle, then? Not quite that wild. Summer with tall trees and fast little rivers. And lakes, perhaps, and mountains? Yeah, that's it. Canada. I like to go to the Rockies. All right, then. We can't make Canada just like that, can we? <laughs> Don't we have to somehow travel there? You have traveled here. We both have. You came here in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> You'll be this. Wow! Look at those trees! And the mountains behind them. Who are you talking to? No one. Hi. Hi. I I was just admiring the view. Quite something, isn't it? You on vacation? No. But yeah. Sort of. Well, sort of a working holiday? Yeah, you could say that. Do you work here? You could say that. I go where the work takes me. Well, you actually work here in the forest? 
I'm a logger. I cut down the trees and float lumber down the river. You English? Yeah, but I live in Luxembourg. Luxembourg. That's in Germany, right? <laughs> Would you like a beer? <coughs> I'm Brad. I'm Becky. No thanks. I don't really like beer. Good. I'm down to my last six pack. <laughs> but I've got some coke as well. Somewhere. Ah, here. Yeah. So what brought you out here? I guess I just wanted to see Canada. Quite something, isn't it? Must seem all bigger than Germany, I suppose. We certainly don't have mountains like those. It's beautiful. It sure is impressive. But when you actually work up, it's different. What do you mean? Well, when you're hundreds of miles from the nearest town, you realize how many luxuries you take for granted when you live in one. You ever think about that? I suppose not, but surely it must make a difference working on such a beautiful countryside. You do realize it's not like this all year round, you know. How cold do you think it gets in winter? I don't know, minus five degrees? It goes well below minus 40. It can get so cold that if you step outside without the right of stuff on, you can get instant frostbite. Wow, I didn't realize you get that bad. Don't get me wrong, it's an amazing country. There's something about the wilderness that just seems to go on and on. You can drive for literally days, hardly see anyone. Just mountains, lakes, and rivers. You get used to solitude during those trips. How far are we from the nearest town? Ah, uh, it's only a boot two miles back through the forest. You must have seen it. Which way did you come from? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I guess you could say I came from the uh, east. Mm -hmm. Can I see that? Uh, sure. Jasper Park Hotel, eh? Is that where you're staying? I guess so. Must have been booked up by Cornelius. Who's Cornelius? Oh, uh, I guess you could describe him as a kind of tour arranger. Well, he's booked you into a good hotel. Hope you've got a bit of cash on you. I expect that he's taking care of us all. I must meet this guy. Probably will. Someday. Wait. <laughs> what? I just saw a bear in the distance. What? Shh! Believe me, you don't want to meet one of those creatures face to face. Well, is this usual? It's becoming more often, but they don't usually come down this low. But they've been seen going into towns and even public camping areas, you know, looking for food. Damn it. I've come without my gun. Well, you wouldn't shoot the bear, would you? Damn right. If it comes bothering us, we gotta defend ourselves. What? They're like vermin. They threaten us. We gotta stamp them out. Come on, let's get back to the village. You don't mind? I think I'm gonna wait here a little longer. Are you mad? There's a bear nearby. <laughs> no, really, you go on. I'll hide in a bush or something. I'm going to go get my gun. It's in the van, not too far away. Alright. You're mad. Hello, Marston. What's up? I can see that just by being here, it's a beautiful country and all, but just talking to this guy. I don't want to spend my time learning that every place has its good and bad points. But you'd said that you'd wish you'd traveled more. I know, but as soon as I arrived, just start wishing that Angela and Valerie would share this with me. Okay, Miss, I'm back. Quick, let's get out of here. Very well. Miss? Miss? Never again! Never again! I'm 
still not quite sure why you wanted to come here, of all places. I want to experience what it's like to be famous and talented. I never got to do very much outside of my school. But to what purpose? You'd be surprised how many famous new arrivals I've handled who thought fame to be either a complete anti-climax or even a curse. Well, I've nothing to lose, have I? I can't commit suicide or accidentally take an overdose because, well, I'm already dead. Oh, please don't think that I'm trying to influence you in any way. The experience must be entirely of your own choosing. Fine. I'm choosing to be an actress. An actress? A movie actress. Very well. Hey, isn't that Helen? The girl who died after being stabbed. Has she come back to Earth? Well, no, not in the sense you mean. You must remember, we're outside of Earth time here, but to give you a sense of perspective, I brought you to Pinewood Studios about six months before the date of your death and that of Helen's. Wow. Hey, does that mean I can meet myself? Theoretically, yes. But I think it would be completely unnecessary. You're no longer the person you were. You wouldn't be able to tell yourself who you are. So the whole thing would be completely meaningless. Come on, the makeup team is waiting. Shouldn't you be on set, Helen? Technical problems. They're trying to sort out something with the lighting. Well, shouldn't you be there trying to work out the best lighting for you? I've just spent four hours on set, after two hours of makeup, and Francesco thinks that I'm going to spend another two hours while he sorts out the lights? I hope you know what you're doing. He you can't fire me. We're halfway through the movie. Yeah, but what about the movie itself? You want it to look as good as possible, don't you? He saw the rushes of yesterday's filming. If he didn't like the look last night, he should have changed things this morning. Before we started filming. He takes it very seriously. I remember this one part, Death Catcher 4. Huh? <laughs> Jimbo, please remember that I've made several movies, and this is what, your third? And in a minor supporting role. You don't know what it's like to be the star and having all the attention on you. Uh, so how's it going? Francesco is furious. The lighting is all wrong. He insists he told them about it yesterday. Well, if he's going to carry on like this for the rest of the day, I might as well go back to the hotel. I might even get my nails done. I haven't had my hands seen to it all this week. I wouldn't go too far. I think Francesco might want to have a word with you later. Really? He can be most bothersome. <coughs> oh, and I'm sorry to hear that you've had some of your lines good, by the way. Oh, no. You haven't had your scene cut, have you? Whoever told you that, my dear? Obviously, I'm meant to tell that you know that the beach scene is being extended. So I'm actually going to spend more time on camera. I, I get <laughs> You are? Oh yes, of course you are. I forgot that. So, presumably, your bit has been lengthened as well? Uh, I suppose so. Uh, just the beach scene, though. Well, I suppose there have to be some distractions. The audience will want to see me for every second of the film. <laughs> I think we've seen quite enough of you already. I can't understand. What with the money being spent on this film? Why they keep giving you dresses two sizes too small. <laughs> it's such a pity for you, but I suppose they have to make savings somewhere. When you get to play a leading part? <laughs> Should that ever happen, of course. You will learn a little about style, and that it takes a certain figure to carry off certain garments. I think both of you got quite a lot of exposure in this film. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, very uh, sweet of you, Jim, to humor the starlet, but she just has to learn that success won't just come to her if she doesn't work harder. Now, if you see Francesco, be a dear, and tell him I'm by the pool. She thinks she's indispensable, but you watch. The actor won't work over her again, and once word gets around, Helen's not really an actress in any case. She said no formal training. Look, we all want this film to be a success, don't we? If Helen doesn't come off well, it's not going to help any of us, is it? <laughs> it might not help you, darling, but my agent is working on getting me into more serious work. 
Oh, hello. I don't think I know you. I'm sorry, dear. Extras aren't allowed in this area. Oh, no, I'm not an extra. That includes bit players as well. You're not a bit player, are you? No, I've just been asked to do the beach scene. I believe I'm acting with you. You are Jim, aren't you? I'm playing Pyramus. But that's my role. If Francesco will switch my park without telling me, I'll sue him and make his picture. So where did you just emerge from? Francesco's bedroom? As it happens, I got a call from my agent yesterday saying that I had a part in this film. They just told me to come and wait here. Well, if Helen can be absent, so can I. If he's prepared to chase after about floozy, I'll also be at the pool if he wants me. I've never known someone have such a big effect on her with so little effort. Congratulations! I haven't even said anything. I was just told to come and wait here when I were arrived at the reception. Oh, you might be waiting a very long time. The director's bogged down in technical issues. You know, I hope those girls brought their suntan lotion. It'd be such a shame if one of them gets sunburned and if, you know, someone had to step in for them. Ever since I arrived here, Everyone seems so tense. I thought it'd be fun working on the sides. Fun? When those girls get their claws sharpened and their war paint on, it's like a gladiatorial arena out there. Have you even met Francesco? No. Is he nice? Nice? He's got the ego the size of the Grand Canyon, an opinion of himself as high as the Eiffel Tower, and he also thinks nothing of shouting and remonstrating of the tiniest little things. But yeah, apart from that, he's quite easy going. Tell me any of that. Uh, don't worry, if he likes you, you'll have no problems. But if he takes issue with you, just don't argue and do as he says. Uh, I'll go see what Francesca's up to. human life that you have missed out upon, I can arrange for you to have a few more experiences so as to better prepare you for your journey. You mean, I could be married to Jim? Absolutely not. Forming relationships is strictly forbidden. You must understand, you wouldn't have a human body, so marriage would be tricky. No body? Then what's the point? There's nothing left for me on Earth. I might as well go now. Very good. That was quick. Oh yes, we got into Samantha on the way, and she hasn't handled many new cases since coming to our department. So I thought 
I let her take care of Helen. Oh, that was thoughtful of you. Not a bad little job, this. Plenty of time to relax and disperse with a few interesting cases. Right, if there's nothing else for me, I'll go upstairs and have a rest. You did say you wanted to review Becky's case. Oh, yes, that's right. She's on her third experience, isn't she? Unusual choice of experiences, but she seems to have a ge generally improved self-knowledge and awareness of others. Well then, we might see her working in one of our departments before long. I'm not so sure. On the mind side, she has shown no inclination to take control of the situation, and she's far too compassionate to see things completely objectively. Mm. That could cause a few problems. Is she still at the film studios? That's right. I wonder what useful experiences she's having there. I was spotted playing a smallish part in Grangemouth Abbey. Oh, I'm sorry, I've not heard of it. Uh, not many people have. It was a historical drama which flopped, by the way. But Francesco saw it and he thought he was, I was what he was looking for. But this is Death Catcher 5. It's hardly a drama or historical. <laughs> yeah, you really get an idea of how off the wall Francesco's ideas are. I mean, he sees the interplanetary assassin Resembling an 18th century country gentleman. <laughs> so then, why did you choose the party? It wasn't my choice. My agent insisted it would be a great for a move. Oh, to work with Francesco? No, to work in these studios. He's probably right, but I feel like what I'm doing is a disgrace to my profession. No, but an actor has to do lots of different roles, doesn't he? Have you even read the script? Go. Uh, sorry, well, that's me. <clears throat> Helgor, you shall not escape now. I have traveled five million miles through the ginormous solar system. I have passed five moons and ten planets. And then, uh, Helgor, uh, didn't you have a service station to stop on route? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually quite funny. It's not meant to be comedy. It's total rubbish from start to finish. I don't know why I'm doing this. Who are you playing anyway? Oh, I'm playing Kronos. I assume you haven't read the script. I uh, know, but if my eyes are anything like yours... And those two girls are fighting, I the biggest part. Jim! Jim! My doctor, are you? Not yet. Mm -hmm. What? Oh... I thought you'd gone to the pool. I did, but I forgot my necklace. You haven't seen it, have you? It's not that uh, shiny, uh, sparkling thing that keeps dazzling me, is it? Well, it might be. Where is it? Uh, one of the others has borrowed it. What? Which one? I'm joking. Uh, I saw that you'd forgotten it, so I put it in here to keep it safe. Thank you. But Jane thinks her rings are something? Wait till she sees this. She was given that by, by her co-star in her last movie. It cost $20,000, and she treats it like a plastic headband. Are you sure Francesca will be busy all afternoon? Yeah, I probably will. Yep, I should show you around the studios, at least the parts that aren't being filmed. Yeah, okay, fine. But, but maybe we should wait just a little longer. I mean, I haven't even had a screen test. Yeah, all right. To be honest, I'd rather be here with you and with those girls trying to bitch each other. <laughs> well, what are you thinking? I was just thinking about this girl I met recently. Uh, not an actress like that, though. No, not like an actress at all, actually. Uh, where was she? She was in Hampstead Park. Oh yeah, sunbathing on a Sunday afternoon. No, it was evening and she was living there. Living there? Hasn't she got a home to go to? No, not at, le at least not a home she wanted to go back to. It's just seeing Helen. What this homeless girl would give for even a tiny fraction of any of what she's got. Deb's her name was. So thin and pale. And her head was red and frizzy. Deb's, eh? Hamstead Park? Side case. Yeah, but there are lots of places. No, 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 no! I want it in black! It must be in black! 
and tell them it has to be here by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, or I'm cancelling that contract. I need more space. You extras, move. I need more space. Move. 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 <laughs> These extras really don't know what they're doing. Where are they? Where have they gone? Uh, I think they thought that you were sorting out the lighting. The lighting is good. I have the lighting I want, and now my actresses have left. Where is Helen? She is trying to push me. I know it. I know it. Who is this? <laughs> this is Becky. Hello, I'm Pinkins. Bellissimo, bellissimo. You are just what I asked for. Oh, yes. You have read the script. Uh, no, I haven't. No matter. You are perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> she is the sole survivor to the rescue mission to Nerdas 5. Alone, vulnerable, on an alien world. She is pursued by Nargols. Who is Nargols? Uh, they are these slimy ape creatures. <laughs> and then, Zargon himself appears. He fights off the Nargols and sweeps you off to safety. Do it! <laughs> Show me. What? <laughs> Save her! Sweep her off her feet! Now? Yes, now! <laughs> um, Alright. Yes, yes! Look into his eyes with passion! <laughs> no, with passion, what are you doing? <laughs> oh. ah. The costume will make the costume even more revealing. Uh, thanks, I guess. Please, the costumers are waiting for you. But don't I need a screen test? There is no need for a screen test. I have decided. Now, please. The costumers are waiting for you. Oh, wait! Tell them I need more lead. <laughs> uh, is everything else sorted? Yes, you will please get ready. No! For your next scene, there is a problem. The lead Nargol has um, broken his leg by falling off a ladder. And the actress to play Kalita is ill. I must find a replacement urgently. I need a teen girl who looks pale, sick, emotionless, and desperate. Not one of those sometimes bimbos out by the pool. We are no one. I must speak to the casting agencies, so we will have to do your scene tomorrow. What if I can find the perfect girl for the part? It's not a big part. So, if you're sure you know the right person, bring her. But I want her on set at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Put her up in a hotel if necessary. On my account. I might be able to find just the right girl for you, Francesco. Uh, give me two hours. Excuse me, do you live around here? Is that some kind of junk? <laughs> that is to say, from around this area. Around this area? What's that supposed to mean? I'm looking for someone local. Right, you see that rose bushes over there? That's where I live. Now piss off. <laughs> I think you might be able to help me. Me? Help you? And why would I want to do that? Well, I can think of two reasons. One, I'd be very grateful. And two, I'll make it worth your while. Well, it depends what kind of help you want, doesn't it? Well, I'm looking for someone. A girl. Uh, thin with straggly hair. What makes you think I know a girl like that? Well, I've nowhere else to go, and I've heard she's living here, in the park. You from the police? The government? I've got no official status whatsoever. A well-wisher told me about her. Don't get many of those around here. Catch your name? Yes, uh, Debs. Debs? You from a family? 
I've got no relation to her whatsoever. Do you know her, Debs? Maybe I'll do. Maybe I'll do. <laughs> Seen it for me, Uh, Will this be enough? Yeah, you're going to need a little bit more than that, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic, but I'm an actor, and an actress told me she met a girl called Debs, and you were exactly as how she described. It must be you. What did she say about me? She said you didn't want any help. Well, that's right. So why are you still here? We need you to play a part in the movie we're making. Me? In a film? Don't listen to him, Debs. He's having you on. Look, I can prove it. Blimey. Looks genuine. Look, it's entirely up to you. You don't have to accept this and I can leave right now. I can't act. <laughs> Neither can all those girls in our film. <laughs> At least you look real, unlike those silicone injected over painted dolls. Listen, Mr. Uh... Uh, call me Jim. Jim. Dex is gonna get paid, right? Yeah, a standard rate and put in a hotel. Would you be looking for any uh, mild parts in this <laughs> film? <laughs> uh, look, can we talk about it over a beer? You see, it's like this. Okay. Okay. 
It's wonderful. You look bellissima. Oh, thanks. I guess. Um, no one said anything to me about a new actress playing Kalita? No, probably because it disappeared off set. And Deborah here, she is more than just an actress. She will be a star. I can see it. What? Her? So, what school did you go to, honey? How many films have you done? Um, you see, I haven't... She I... needs no school. Look at her eyes. <laughs> that has been a world of experience then. What he just said. <laughs> now, please, clean yourselves up. I would like to start shooting in 20 minutes. But my hair! Enough! Haven't you just been running through a moving jungle scene? Your hair should look a mess. Exactly! Now go! And get rid of that idiot high shirt. <laughs> ah, Jim! We start shooting in 20 minutes. That's uh, fine. Have you seen Becky? Who is Becky? That girl who was here yesterday, you made me lift her up. I do not know a Becky. Now please, get ready to start shooting. But you know what I mean, don't you? If you mean that little tart who was here yesterday, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> she was just an extra, wasn't she? You heard Francesco, we have to get on set. I didn't imagine her, did I? Take it to the next stage. Good, I need to go sort it quickly because I've got a problem. It's unlike you to have problems, Susie. There's a problem with the ledger. According to the files, we should by now have had a Deborah Williams arrive. Maybe she's a bit late. It can happen sometimes when a good doctor gets involved. <laughs> but this wasn't an actual causes case. Well, accidents can be unreliable as well, especially car crashes. You think the wheel is going to stay on for another three days, but actually it goes off immediately. But the end result is always the same, eh? Dramatic, unexpected death. <laughs> but this was a suicide, and the woman in question is showing no sign of wanting to kill herself. The, yeah, that does sound a bit more serious. What details do you have? Um, severe case of depression, virtually estranged from all friends and family members, self-esteem non-existent, body emaciated and lacking in vital nutrients, causing damage to several organs. Mm, not very encouraging. Personal circumstances? Living at rough, has been for 18 months. That's strange. Sounds like she had absolutely nothing to live for and wouldn't have survived much longer, even if she wanted to. Ah, Becky. Can you get me a status update on Deborah Williams while I chat with Becky? <coughs> Hello, Becky. Glad to see that you've come back to us. How was your last experience? It was disappointing, but Worthwhile. Disappointing? You take one sugar, don't you? Yeah, thanks. I found that even in the film industry, glamour isn't what you expect. Everyone seems so superficial. You do realise that you're entitled to another two experiences. What's the point? No one can know who I was, and I can't make any new connections with anyone. It's... I have to go that way sooner or later, haven't I? Very good. Susie, Becky's ready for you to take her through now. Goodbye. Wait, 
This is the emaciated physical mental wreck. Last night we were living under a bush. I'm sorry, I can't explain how it's happened. Unless... Unless what? Becky. Deborah Williams was in the same film that Becky was in. It can't be Becky. Becky only ever spoke to people in the film studios. Can you see any other connection? Well, no, but we can't question her about it. You know the rule. Once through there, the connection with Earth is close. Then bring her back! Impossible. No one ever comes back through there. We have a situation here. Someone on Earth is very much alive, and they shouldn't be. We can't call her back. How are we going to explain to the high authority? How are you going to explain Deborah Williams? All right, bring her in, bring her in. Ah, Becky, I'm so sorry to call you back. This is most irregular and I believe unprecedented. We need to question you about your last experience at the film studios. There's nothing to be worried about. We just need to complete our records. Becky, do you recall meeting anyone called Deborah Williams? No. There was Jade and Helen and these other two actresses, but neither of them were called Deborah. Becky, are you sure? Yes, positive. Do you recall meeting anyone thin and weak? Ill-looking, perhaps? No, but everyone looked healthy, tan, or well made up. Do you recall meeting anyone with long, red, frizzy hair that had been homeless? No, not at the film studio. Did you meet someone like that in another experience, perhaps? Oh, yeah, when I was a policewoman. I met a homeless girl called Debs. Deborah? Did you talk? Did you mention her to anyone in the film studios? No, I don't think so. Becky, please, think. I might have mentioned her to Jim, but no one else, I'm sure. That's it, Susie, that's the connection. What are you talking about? Becky, I'm so sorry. I know it's not what you intended to do, but you inadvertently changed a little piece of history. I see how it's happened. You met Deborah, who knew was deaf when she was homeless. She should have killed herself shortly after that. But you mentioned her to Jim at the film studios. What difference could that make? Um, the, according to the files, the director told Jim that he needed to replace a thin, ill-looking girl. Jim thought of the girl you had told him about. He then went to the park you had mentioned, found Deborah, and offered her the chance to be in a film. This gave her a new sense of hope and stopped her from committing suicide. Wow, well that's fantastic. But there's something that still doesn't make sense. You said that the, that the thoughts of the people that I met would be monitored and erased if I said anything that might change their lives. That is correct, but it would seem the monitors have failed in this instance. The chances of this happening were so remote that no one could have foreseen the possible consequences. And because you saved her, Deborah is desperate to find you and thank you. And Jim is also trying to locate you because he was, you were the only normal person he met while filming. But you see what you've done? You've created real connections with two people on Earth, preventing one of them from committing suicide. You also had to be recalled from over there. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cause any problems. There's a side note here. Deborah Williams was associated with a down and out called Lawrence Smith. He was due to die of chronic liver damage, but he made his way into the film industry as well. So presumably his natural life has been extended as well. Considerably. After a lengthy spell in the drying out clinic, his organs are responding well to treatment. This gets worse! No longer, no wonder none of the monitors foresaw this. This is incredible! <coughs> I've never even met anyone from Lord Smith. That is possible, but you were instrumental in saving or at least extending his life. Uh, what were you thinking? Were you trying to get me sacked? No, honestly. I need some tea. Uh, <laughs> There's nothing else for it. I can only think of one thing to do. But you can't change what's happened on Earth. No, I know, but Becky has direct post-death links with three people and as such cannot progress until those two people are dead. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Positive. I know it will require some explaining, but at this point, it's the only thing I can think of. Becky, I am so sorry, but I have no alternative but to send you back. What? This means that you'll be allowed a normal life. And Susie, you'll have to arrange new dates of death for her, Deborah Williams, and Lawrence Smith. Mm. Under the circumstances, it's unlikely that any of your lives should be cut short. So you'll have to presume normal life spans. Do you know what to do? Where do you mean you are? Wait, what? One, two, three.
that? Maybe you banged your head or something. <laughs> no, no. I feel great. I'm so glad you're here. Of course we're here. We wouldn't leave you. I know. I just seem to remember. Remember what? Nothing. I must have imagined it. Imagined what? If you can walk, we better get you back home. But you might have a concussion or something. Yeah, all right. You must have an angel looking out for you, Becky. That fool could have killed you. An angel. What is it? No, it's, it's nothing. Come on, let's get it back. You will see her again, you know. Yes, I know. So, what now? Well, I think that we both need a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs>